Hey everyone, I'm Tony and this is TNC Travel and this is actually the fourth video in a series of video I've been working on from our 2017 epic Europe trip and essentially we went to five countries, six cities over the course of about three weeks and documented it uh, along the way. Now back in 2017 I didn't have any like camera gear or stabilizers or anything it was just you know using my phone and a handheld click point and shoot type camera to capture the trip and at this point in the trip we are in a train from Venice to Rome and I've already talked about it on a couple of these videos but trains are literally the easiest way to travel in Europe and this was no exception I don't remember the distance or the time that it took but the trains offer beautiful scenery, comfortable seats, they offer food and beverage if you want to buy it. They have Wi-Fi, but it's not very good. And here's some uh, commentary from me and Christine while we were actually on the train to Rome. Alright, so on the train from Venice to Rome. It's a beautiful day. I just realized it was kind of beauty. Either eating or just finished eating. Total coincidence. Christina, Christina has not been feeling well. Her tummy tum tum and her attitude to to. <laughs> because of my stomach, I should know not to go to that pasta place because it's a tourist trap. Like a anyway, um, of Tony and Christina. Actually, we're excited to go to Rome because as soon as we get there, we are going. This was going to be signing off. Food tour. This was going to be signing off. Oh, well, I thought this was our video. Okay, it's our video. All right, we're going on a food tour tonight. Now, For can I? For four hours in a local neighborhood, La Traversini. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's the twilight. It's yeah. It's La Traversini. So we're doing that five to nine. And then I'm sure we're going to go see the Trevi 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 Fountain. Fountain. Mm -hmm. This is pretty at night time. All right. Like now, it's, now it's final. We're now oh. signing off. One, two. So what you won't see here is us getting to our hotel, checking our bags, and then heading back out into the city. And for the first day in Rome, we left Venice pretty early, so we got to Rome pretty early, and we had booked a uh, afternoon, early evening food tasting walking tour. Really cool stuff. We met with a local who has lived in Italy most of his life, originally from New York. And this is us just sort of after checking in our stuff and heading towards the food tour. We're walking through through the square at the Pantheon and it's amazing. It hit us right in the face without expecting it when we turn the corner. It's incredible. Thousands of people. And this footage here is actually during the food tour. We go into a cave, literally it's what it looks like, uh, underground cellar. For a restaurant in Rome and this used to house thousands and thousands of bottles of wine it still does some of the bottles they don't know how old they are because of the way that they were stored with no labels and such so it was a really cool stop uh, I think we stopped at seven places total and ate at all of them and here we're right back out into the city the, so you saw the Pantheon earlier in the day where we stumbled on it and it came out of nowhere. We just turned a corner and there it was. And these are things that you probably noticed as you watch these videos that I've read about since I was a kid and going to Europe for the first time was pure magic. I mean, you're seeing things that you've seen, whether it's in media or in education, you've seen your whole life. And so for me to stumble on the Pantheon without really knowing where I was in the city, it was pretty cool. I uh, used uh, Google Maps and we pay for data overseas. We have AT&T here in the States, so we pay 10 bucks a day each day to use our data just like we would back home. And that's how we kind of navigate our way around. I know a lot of people are against that and they just use Wi-Fi everywhere they go. But for me, it's worth the convenience of not having to worry about it. But that's how we stumbled on the Pantheon, walking our way towards the food tour starting point. And here it is at night where just literally thousands of people are just walking around and enjoying themselves. It's really cool. And here you're going to see a bunch of footage of the Coliseum. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on the Coliseum during this video because I actually made a video specific to the Coliseum. And it's got do's, don'ts, tips and tricks, what we learned uh, not to do so that you guys don't make the same mistake. But... This was one of the coolest things I've ever done, not just in Europe, not just on this trip, but ever in my life. 
So the Colosseum and the time of the gladiators is a period in history I've been fascinated with since I was a kid, really all the way through college and into my adulthood. This is our first entrance into the Colosseum from the exterior once we got through security. And it just, you know, kind of takes your breath away. And it takes a minute to kind of gather your thoughts and take it all in. And again, I don't want to dive too deep into the Colosseum itself. This is more about the trip to Rome, but I'll uh, add a link to that video. The tour included a bunch of areas surrounding the Colosseum, um, the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill, as well as what I didn't show you was the quote unquote dungeons of the Colosseum uh, below ground and then at the highest level of the Colosseum as well. That had the best views by far. So here's some more of the uh, Roman Forum and Palatine Hill footage I got. Here we are the next day and we booked a free walking tour. So if you guys get a chance to check out the video we made for Venice on this trip, I uh, talk a little bit more extensively in there about free walking tours and you can check out the details, but this was not a good one. This had probably 30 to 40 people and the, the tour was so bad that we actually ended up leaving about 20 or 30 minutes into it, I would say. But the cool thing about this one was that we met at the Spanish Steps and the fountain right outside the Spanish Steps. So uh, it's a very iconic place where a lot of people take pictures. You're going to see them here in just a moment. But for us, the tour was not worth it. Uh, we took our pictures and we got to experience the Spanish Steps obviously during the day. And then later on this day, we came back and, and got to see it at night. And the way it's lit up is beautiful. It's a big area for a lot of tourists to congregate and take photos. You just got to be okay with a, a ton of tourists, and that's pretty much what Italy has become. Good, bad, or indifferent, but the, the Spanish Steps are a stunning locale in, uh, in Rome. And here is the iconic, uh, world-famous Trevi Fountain. And I want to cram as many uh, tips and tricks as I can into this video. Uh, my advice for the Trevi Fountain is to be patient. Uh, stand on the exterior where we're standing in this shot here get as many pictures as you can and then as you get closer the more crowded it gets guys so you really just have to show your patience the other thing I want to warn everybody against is there's a lot of um, I don't want to call them swindlers because they're just trying to make a living but you really got to be careful by the street vendors they're trying to sell you selfie sticks um, you know they want to catch tourists in a bind that don't have what they need uh, and there are pickpocketers in Rome. I, I mean, I witnessed it towards the Vatican. I, I watched it happen. So you really got to be careful with the pickpocketers. But overall, the Trevi is a stunning, absolutely stunning man-made achievement. And it's worth going. And we went multiple times. We went during the day. We went during the night. You're going to see in this next clip, uh, we threw coins into the fountain and wished uh, whatever it is that we wished. But... Uh, my advice is to start on the exterior, work your way in, be patient, and then move along because it's going to stay crowded all day, all night. There's no good time of the day during the summer to see the Trevi Fountain without thousands of people around. This is a short clip of a charcuterie board that we got uh, at a restaurant Christine found online. Uh, it's incredible. And get ready to eat a lot of bread, a lot of pasta. A lot of meats and a lot of cheeses when you're in Italy. It's just incredible and uh, fantastic food. So the next day we booked a tour to the Vatican and it was an early morning um, skip the line type of tour. We booked it through Viator. I don't remember the exact company we booked with. But nonetheless, it included about a half an hour with this tour guide you see in the video. And we got to walk the grounds, learn a little bit about Vatican City as a whole and the you know various buildings and structures before he guided us towards the Sistine Chapel. Now, I'm going to give you some really important advice at this portion in the video about Vatican and touring the Vatican, especially if you want to see St. Peter's Square. Um, we took a cab from our hotel to this cafe right outside the gates to Vatican City. Uh, it was pretty easy to get there. The cab driver knew exactly where to take us. And that specific cab driver recommended one of the best restaurants we've ever had in our entire lives. But nonetheless, uh, these are some more video footage of the grounds. And then he guides us into the building itself. Okay, this is the portion of the video where I think I'm going to give you the best advice that I possibly can relative to Rome, the Vatican, Sistine Chapel, and St. P. 
Peter's Basilica and Square. There's going to be a lot of people on this tour. You just got to deal with it. Italy's an amazing country, and a lot of people want to experience it, just like we did. Now, once you go through the building, the museum, all the artwork, the tour guide walks you into the Sistine Chapel, and you don't see him anymore enjoy it really savor the moment because you're seeing something that so few people across the world have an opportunity to see there's no time limit once you get inside and there are a few benches there's not enough seating for everybody that's in there but one of the reasons we booked this early am tour was because i can't remember more than maybe a hundred people inside the sistine chapel when we were there now that sounds like a lot but once you get there you'll realize that's really not a lot of people my biggest trick that I can give you on this video is ask ahead of time if the basilica and the square are open. There is an entrance to the church, the basilica, and the square directly from the Sistine Chapel. That day we went, the church had not yet opened. It wasn't going to be open for another hour. So we went and got lost in the Vatican and got something to eat, killed about an hour, went back into the Sistine Chapel, enjoyed it a second time, and then worked our way out of the building and towards the Basilica. Now there's only one way to walk into the Sistine Chapel. The exit to the Basilica and the square is on the back of the chapel to the right. It won't make sense until you get there, but just trust me on this. It is the biggest tip that we got um, in that you can go right into the Basilica from the Sistine Chapel. So here you're going to see video footage of the Basilica itself. It's gorgeous and it's worth taking all the videos and pictures you want. Just remember, be respectful. It's a house of God and there's a lot of people, a lot of tourists, but there's also the clergy and the people that are actually running the facility working while we are there on vacation. So be respectful. And here it is. We made our way through the Basilica and out to the square where we probably spent another hour, hour and a half, just walking around and taking pictures and enjoying the sights. And everybody was respectful and everyone was kind. And it <laughs> doesn't hurt that it is the, uh, the epicenter for the entire religion of Catholicism. But it was a really special experience. And I keep saying that. And you know, when we're on these trips, Christine and I don't take anything for granted. We understand how lucky we are to do this, and we work hard to accomplish these things and be able to go see these things. And this was absolutely breathtaking, and it was something that will stay with me for a long, long time. Now, we've been to Rome since and got to experience the Vatican at night. Um, and I can tell you I recommend seeing it both ways during the day and in the evening because it's just a magical place. Now I'll let the video play for a little bit before we go to the next location. I do want to point out that if you don't book a ticket ahead of time like we did, this is the line that you stand in. Just to get into the Basilica, I can't tell you for certain if this line gets you into the Sistine Chapel, but that line was the line just to get into the church and to do exactly what we got to do as a part of our tour of the Sistine Chapel. So just a heads up, book your tickets ahead of time. So earlier in the video, I mentioned a cab driver that recommended a restaurant. This was it. 
one of the best restaurants we've ever been to some of the best pasta we've ever had no one spoke english and it was all locals and that's how we knew it was really good food just trust the locals advice so this video footage is actually later in the same day and it is in the piazza navona i learned how to say that when we went there um it is a basilica it's a church but this piazza is actually more known for the fountain which you're going to see here in just a second this is the absolutely gorgeous fiumi fountain at the center of the piazza this is similar to what we showed you in the venice uh st peter's square where you know it's a tourist attraction the restaurants are going to be very generic menus uh, not a ton of options but uh they are centrally located and this is one of the coolest piazzas in rome that we went to and this should be pretty obvious this is the trevi fountain again in the evening the way it's lit up is gorgeous but you can see all the crowds um beating a dead horse again uh but there are a lot of people in the summer and you just kind of gotta go with it i mean i'm a very structured traveler with an itinerary for every 15 minutes but i learned pretty quickly on this trip that you've just got to be flexible and nimble and just go with the flow and by this point in the trip in rome i think i did a pretty good job i, I hope christine would agree with me but um, I started instead of resenting the street vendors embracing it and understanding that people are just trying to make a living and all the other tourists that were annoying me are getting under my skin I just had to look at it in a different light and say well they're on the vacation of a lifetime just like we are and you know just uh, go with the flow that's another bit of advice I have for you across the board in general just go with the flow i mean these are sites that people only dream of seeing so if you're finally lucky enough to get there enjoy it and uh try to stay respectful i uh i've been reading a lot lately about the effect tourism has on cities and countries specifically venice and we are trying to be as conscious as possible when it comes to our travels and that includes being kind and uh not leaving too big of a mark when we're there and hopefully affecting the economy in a good way so i'll let the video play out from here this is actually the last uh the last night in rome and then i believe we left the next day to uh barcelona and here we are at the top of the spanish steps looking down versus earlier in the video we were at the bottom of the spanish steps looking up so I'll let the, the video play out, but also from here, we went to a restaurant that Christine discovered through YouTube, and you guys will get a sense for how much we ate on this trip and uh, how you just got to kind of trust the recommendations of the internet and asking around, and you'll get the best experience possible. So we're at dinner. I'm going to show you what's left of dinner. There's the, that's the wine bottle. Wine is gone. There's water. This was the veal. This, this whole plate was a veal steak with potatoes over here. That's gone. Gone. This plate was carbonara. Carbonara gone. Artichoke gone. So the only thing left in our dinner is a little bit of water. Oh. Hold on, wait. A little bit of lettuce that nobody wants and one slice of bread. Oh, but we ate two plates before this. We need to share that. <laughs> Bye. Alright, so this is where we just ate dinner. Here's a busy street, right? Busy street. And the restaurant is hidden in there. Can't see it unless you look for that sign up there. Totally hidden. Love it. Love it. This is it. Look how small it is.
Okay, and here's the pretty much the last shot of this video outside the Basilica di Santa Maria. It's a small and historical church in Rome. I'll let the, pl the video play out, but Rome was incredible. And we got to go back in 2019 as a stop on our Europe trip uh, from Italy to Croatia. And it was cool to have already been there once before to know a little bit about the lay of the land and how to get around and, and just make our way through it a lot more quickly. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, the video. I hope you're learning some tips and tricks to help you in your travels. Now we are obviously in 2020 in a quarantine and the world is kind of crazy right now, but eventually we'll beat this thing and things will return to normal. And hopefully these videos give you some insight into not only how easy it is to travel to Europe, but hopefully again, teach you some tips and tricks along the way. So uh, like the video, uh, leave a comment below, ask any questions you may have, subscribe to the channel, and keep a lookout for more videos from the 2017 Epic Europe trip, where we went to six cities in five countries, and I'll talk to you soon.